Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the derivation of the geometric integral for streamlined calculations for the source panel method. You might be asking, well we've already gone through the IIJ and the JIJ, why do we need to do more? Well, when we solve for the source panel strengths, we used the normal velocity, so we needed the normal velocity geometric integral. When we did the uh, velocities on the panels, we needed to get the tangential velocity, so we needed the uh, de partial derivative uh, with respect to the tangential. And now, when we want to solve for streamlines around the airfoil, we need to solve for both the x and the y component of the velocity at all these grid points that surround the airfoil. And that's why we need to now take partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y instead of the normal and tangential partial derivatives. From my flow around an airfoil video, we wrote the velocity potential induced at a point P as phi P with the uniform flow term and the source panel term. And we note that this is our PJ instead of our IJ because we're trying to find the velocity potential induced at a point P in the flow field. So to get the x and the y velocity components, we just take the partial derivatives of the velocity potential with respect to either x or y. And that's what we have in both of these equations here. We have the uniform flow term and we have the source panel flow term. And this looks very similar to both the normal and tangential velocity components just with different partial derivatives. So if you haven't already, I would highly recommend that you watch my normal velocity geometric integral uh, video because a lot of the derivation is the same and I'm just skipping over that here and just summarizing that because there's very little change from this derivation to that derivation. So we can write the geometric integral that we'll be solving in this video as the following here for both x and y. First thing to note is that you'll see that this is called mx and my pj. My normal velocity geometric integral was called uh, IIJ, the tangential velocity integral was called JIJ, those are both for the source panel method. For the vortex panel method videos I'll be making, the normal velocity will be called KIJ, the tangential velocity will be called LIJ, and the X and the Y velocity components for the vortex panel method will be called NX and NY. This is just to keep everything straight, it's the same in my code when we finally get there. So we can write the geometric integrals mx, pj, and my, pj by taking just the integral. This is what we're solving for in this equation. And this is the same just written from the previous whiteboard. And based off of the same way that we uh, evaluated this partial derivative of this term in here, as in my iij video, uh, this is just the der uh, partial derivative of the natural log. And so we get uh, 1 over rpj drpj dxp, and then in here 1 over rpj drpj dyp. Uh, and this is where rpj is just the distance between point P and point J on that particular panel. So we just substitute in xp and yp for xi and yi in the normal equation. So after taking the derivative of the natural log, we still have a partial derivative that we need to evaluate because of the chain rule. And so that's what we're going to do here. So we have drpj dxp and drpj dyp that we need to solve for. And so that's what we're doing in these expressions here. I'll just explain the top one. So first we take the one half power, bring it down, take the rest that's in there, and then subtract off one from the power. And then we need to take uh, the partial derivatives of the inside here because of the chain rule. So we take two times this, so that's two times that. And then we need to take the partial derivatives of these in here. So that's why we have dxp, dxp, and we have dxj, dxp. Similarly for the y now, we take the two down and subtract off a one. So we have two times yp minus yj. And we're still taking the partial derivatives of these terms with respect to xp, which is why we have dyp, dxp minus dyj, dxp. We have the same thing for the drpj dyp, except now all of these partial derivatives that are still in here are with respect to yp. So now we can cross out some of these partial derivatives because they have different subscripts, and if they do, they're going to be equal to zero, which is why this, 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 this all go away, which means that this whole term disappears, and this whole term disappears. dxp dxp is just equal to one, dyp dyp is equal to one, and so we can write the full geometric integral that we're solving in this video as the mxpj mypj down here as the following down here. And you can see that the 2 and the 1 half will cancel. Same thing up here. Uh, this 2 and this 1 half and actually this 2 and this 1 half cancel. This will be brought down to the denominator because of the negative 1 half and you'll say, well why isn't there a square root here? It's because remember that the full geometric integral term is 1 over rpj times uh, these partial derivative terms. So when you have two of the same uh, square root terms, they end up multiplying together and you end up having just the term that's inside of the square root. This is all gone through in detail in my IIJ video. And for the numerator here, we have 
just this xp minus xj up here and just this yp minus yj down here. Because we're integrating over the jth panel, right, the integrals over j, we want to substitute in for the xj and yj variables using our usual geometry variables, again, from my iij video. Uh, and this just puts the xj and the yj in terms of the sj variable. And so we'll plug these guys in for xj and yj. So we're just going to plug in and simplify the numerator. So we have xp minus xj, yp minus yj. Plug in the expressions on the previous whiteboard for xj and yj, and we get xp minus capital xj minus sj cosine phi j, similarly down here for the y, and then we can just rewrite this as uh, first negative sj cosine phi j, and then plus xp minus capital xj, same thing down here, and you'll note that this is in the form of cx sj plus dx, which is very similar, or exactly similar, to the iij uh, and jij forms. So what we can write just uh, these constant values out here, cx, cy, dx, and dy. And this integral is the same form as the iij and jij integrals that we solved for meticulously in previous videos, just with cx and dx instead of c and d, because we need to specify that they're different between the x and the y components. So we just have mxpj is this integral here, and mypj is this integral here. And we've already solved this integral, so we don't need to do that all again. So we can just write the final solution form and then list out all of the uh, a, b, c, x, dx, c, y, d, y, uh, and e variables. And so here is the final form of this geometric integral that probably looks quite familiar to you. Uh, if you've been watching my videos up to now, the only thing that's different now is that we plug in cx and dx and cy and dy in for the normal c and d. And so we have an expression for mxpj and mypj. And because the denominator was the same, uh, has been the same throughout all these videos from uh, the iij video, the a and the b terms are the same. The only things that have changed are the cx, dx, cy, and dy terms that we just derived, and then e is just a convenient variable that's the square root of b minus a squared. So I'll be using the results that we got in this video for mx and my to compute the streamlines for the source panel method in my future videos. Thanks for watching.